By late summer of 1790, Vincent Auger and his companion Jean-Baptiste Chavan left France to return to Saint-Domingue. Frustrated, they decided that more drastic measures had to be taken in order to achieve freedom. From his plantation in Dondon, Auger sent a list of demands to the newly installed governor Blanchelade. Carefully worded, he admonished that giving in to the mulatto's demands would ward off a possible slave revolt. Governor Blanchelade never even replied. The planters or the colonizers wanted power from themselves. They wanted, in a sense, to depend less from France. They wanted some authority from themselves, but they didn't want to share that authority with the affranchis. And at a certain time, the affranchis tried to free themselves. They would accept to share some power, or they wanted to share the power that the whites had, but it was not their intention to share the power with the blacks until we get to Auger and Chavan. Taking matters into his own hands, Auger went to London where he met with the British abolitionist Thomas Clarkson and acquired money and letters of credit to purchase ammunition from the United States. Auger and Chavan were the first one, the first affranchi, who actually tried to organize a rebellion uh, against the French with the help of some slaves. On October 21st, Auger returned to Saint-Domingue along with Chavan and assembled an army of 250 men. Many of them, including André Rigaud, had fought alongside the Americans in their war of independence against Britain. They marched on the Cap, near Grand Riviere and had great success in routing an army detachment of 600 from Cap Francois. News of mulattoes killing white planters caused hundreds of whites to enlist into the army. Under the command of Colonel Vincent, they launched a massive counter-attack against the mulattoes. Two companions escaped to Spanish Santo Domingo, where they were quickly apprehended and brought back to Cap Francois. Months of torture and extensive interrogation, the two leaders were condemned to death. The written judgment decreed that they were to be put to death on the very square opposite from where whites were executed. Thus they were led by the executioner to the main door of the parish church bareheaded and in their shirts, tied by a cord round their neck, and there, on their knees, with wax candles in their hands, to confess their crimes and beg forgiveness. After which, they were to be led to the parade ground, and there have their arms, legs and elbows broken on scaffold. After which, they were to be bound on wheels, their faces turned to the sky to remain thus while it pleased God to keep them alive. Their heads were then to be cut off and their goods and property confiscated. C.L.R. James. Auger and Chavan's heads were placed on poles and left as a public reminder to mulattoes of the fate that awaited them if they ever attempted the same. Not until three years later, at the signing of the peace accord between the revolting slaves and the French, were the heads taken down and solemnly buried. By order of Toussaint L'Ouverture.